uh, we're going part two. Um, starting with problem two. Um, as far as this question goes, we're given this piecewise function and asked to determine some limits of that function. So first, where we're computing x approaching one from the left of the function. Um, approaching one from the left means that we're going from a lower number up to negative one, or sorry, up to one. So I would be using this one because it says x less than or equal to one, so it'll be all the values to the left of that. So that would be two, one squared, from seven on one minus six. Now evaluating that will give us two, sorry again, this should be positive one, minus seven minus six, which has a value of negative 11. So as the limit, as x approaches one from the left of f of x is equal to negative 11. Now, as far as computing the limit from the right, we're going from a higher number down to one. So we're gonna use this second part of the piecewise function. Um, just we're gonna use this part of the piecewise function, just because that represents all numbers to the right of one. So we'll have negative five minus eight times one. That gives us a value of negative 13. So that means that the limit x approaches 1 from the right of f of x is equal to negative 13. Now, on to part c, we know that as we approach 1 from the left, we have a value of negative 11. And as we approach 1 from the right, we have a value of negative 13. So these would kind of tell us that our function is occupying two values at once, which we know we cannot do. Um, so because these two are not equivalent, not equal. That means the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not exist because the limits from either side, from both sides, are not equal. There we go. And then as far as our last problem, this is going to have the same kind of uh, explanation. F is not continuous there. Because the limit does not exist there. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not exist. There you go. On to problem three, um, we're given that a car's fuel efficiency is a function of its speed. So f of s represents the car's fuel efficiency in miles per gallon um, while driving at a speed of s miles per hour. So we're describing the meaning of the following fun expressions. Results should identify the quantity represented by the expression, and we want to specify the units associated with each expression. So as far as f of a goes, or as far as a goes, first we're evaluating it at 50 miles per hour and 45 miles per hour. So this expression represents the difference in fuel, in fuel efficiency between 45 and 50. Per hour. And again, fuel efficiency is in miles per gallon. On to part B. Um, now we have f of 
50 minus f of 45 over 50 minus 45. So this expression represents the average rate of change. between, or the, sorry, the average rate of change of the fuel efficiency in miles per gallon between um, <clears throat> excuse me, the average rate of change of the fuel efficiency in miles per gallon between 50 miles per hour and 45 miles per hour. The quantity is represented now has units of miles per gallon over miles per hour. There we go. On to C now, we, re we, should, uh, we should recognize this as the limit definition of the derivative. So this expression represents the instantaneous rate of change in miles per gallon over miles per hour in fuel efficiency which is given in miles per gallon at 70 miles per hour. That 70 miles per hour just comes from the fact that that's where we're evaluating that. Now, D says, what is the solution to the equation F prime of S equals 0 0.04? That means that S is, would be our unknown. Um, so the solution uh, represents the speed at which the instantaneous rate of change of fuel efficiency is equivalent to 0 0.04 miles per gallon over miles per hour. The speed is, that speed would be given in miles per hour. There we go. On to question four, we're given a graph of f of x with some um, added information. We're supposed to relate each of these quantities over here to what the value is on the graph on the right. So first, looking at f of a, that would be, if we were to evaluate the graph at this point a, so I take this, carry it up to right here, that has a value of c. So there we go, c goes there, which means c can't be used again. Now as far as x minus a goes, that would be the distance from here to here. And if we look up, that distance is given by a. <clears throat> so that means f x minus a is just our answer capital A. Now f of x minus f of a, that would be the value at 
f of x minus the value at uh, f of a, right? So as we can see, the value at f of a is here. The value, or the value at f of x is here. The value at f of a is there. That distance is given by b. So that answer is going to be b. Now back up. We know that we want to find what the value of f of x is next. So that would just be go over to x, evaluate x right here, just given by d. Next, we are asked to find the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So that would be an instantaneous velocity. Um, so if we look up here at a, because we're evaluating, this line is our tangent, which means it has the same slope as the derivative there. And that slope is given by e. So there we go. And then lastly, we're given f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So that's the average rate of change over our interval. If you look at that, that should be between this point, sorry, between this point and this point. And that line connecting those two is this one here. So you know that that average rate of change should be f. Perfect, there you go, that ends part two.